Archaeologists know their trade. When they discover something, they're usually well-placed to tell us what they found and what its significance is. That isn't always the case, though, and on those occasions where they are unsure, they might consult a scientist. Scientists don't have all the answers either, and when they don't, we're left with archaeological mysteries like the ones in this video. Ostrich eggs were luxury items in ancient times. They were often painted with attractive patterns and then sold to the wealthy as commodities for home decoration, but sometimes they served a more practical purpose. As we can see with this vase-like ostrich egg, which has been fitted with a stand at the bottom and a hole for dispensing at the top, they were occasionally used as perfume cases. Similar designs were used when adapting ostrich eggs for wine storage. The majority of ancient ostrich eggs found across the ancient world have turned out to be exports from Egypt and the Levant, but didn't come from ostrich farms. Studies have shown that these ancient eggshells, some of which are 5,000 years old, resemble those of wild ostriches more than captive ones. It appears that egg traders went hunting for wild ostrich to steal their eggs, which would have been a dangerous pursuit because an angry mother ostrich is capable of killing a human being with a single well-placed kick. No wonder they were so expensive to buy. The egg hunters had to make sure their earnings were worth the risks they took to obtain them. Next, we have a shipwreck that appears and then disappears every few years. You'll sometimes find it on Short Sands Beach, York, Maine, USA. If you're lucky, You'll visit on a week where the carcass of an old colonial-era sloop has been exposed by a recent storm or a shift in the sands. Most of the time, though, it remains hidden. The ship's called the Defiance, and it was only identified during its last appearance in 2020. Prior to that, its elusive nature made it difficult for researchers to study it. After taking samples from the skeletal wreck, scientists were able to date the cargo ship to around 1753. The age of the vessel, its shape, and its 60-foot length are all good matches for the Defiance. 18th century records tell us that the ship left Salem for Casco Bay in Portland in 1769, but didn't complete the journey. A stockpile of pork, flour, and other food supplies was lost with the vessel, which was probably pushed ashore by a storm. The wreck is in too delicate a state to be moved, so it will be left on the beach to make occasional appearances to the public until it completely disintegrates. If you enjoy the occasional beer and were to come upon a collection of 600 beer bottles stashed beneath a staircase, you could be tempted to drink them all. We don't advocate attempting to do so with this particular collection. It's a shipment of 600 bottles of Victorian era beer discovered beneath the stairwell in the cellar of an old brewery in Leeds, England in March 2020 and every drop of the contents is poisonous. Local water was used to make the beer, which was filtered through old lead pipes. It was hazardous at the time, and it's much worse now that more than a hundred years have passed. It's amazing that anyone walked away with their lives intact after drinking here, but they did. Indeed, they did so for hundreds of years. The brewery was most recently owned by Tetley, but it had previously been known as the Scarborough Castle Inn and had a history dating back to the Middle Ages. The stamps on the labels of these bottles, on the other hand, date them to the 1880s. They were brewed by J.E. Richardson of Leeds and had a 3% alcohol level. The concentration of lead, on the other hand, was 0.13 milligrams per liter which is 13 times higher than the World Health Organization's upper limit. In 2019, the French village of Plougastel d'Aulo in Brittany offered a cash reward to anybody who could translate a strange inscription on a local stone. We're in 2023 now, and that reward is still available. Nobody's been able to do it. The inscription has been troubling local historians and language experts for centuries, but nobody's ever come close to being able to translate it. That's surprising when you consider that the inscription is short and comes with illustrations, including a boat. The years 1786 and 1787 are etched onto the stone too. 
Some of the experts who've inspected it firsthand believe the language to be derived from Old Breton, whereas others say it's Bosque. The years correspond to the construction of artillery batteries and forts in the surrounding area, but that wouldn't explain the presence of the boat symbol. Another theory is that it's an inscription that commemorates a disaster at sea, but that it was carved by a survivor who was only semi-literate. If that's the case, the inscription might remain untranslated forever. Let's move on to a remarkable find from February 2020, when a team from the University of Chicago in the USA, surveying a site in southern Turkey, announced they'd found the remains of a 3,400-year-old ancient kingdom. Not only that, but they believe that the armies of this kingdom might have defeated King Midas, the legendary leader of Phrygia on the battlefield. Their attention was attracted to the region of Turkmen Karahoyak after a farmer told them he'd seen strange inscriptions carved into large stone markers. The farmer didn't recognize the language, but the experts did. It's ancient Luwian, the common Bronze Age language of the region. If taken at face value, the stone is a monument placed after victory over Phrygia. Evidence at the site suggests that this mighty kingdom once covered 300 acres, making it one of the biggest ancient cities in Bronze Age Turkey. How a city of this size has evaded the attention of archaeologists for so long is unknown, but it opens up a totally new chapter of history in this part of the world. It would have been easy to forgive archaeologists if they'd overlooked this next discovery. It comes from an ancient burial ground in Haltern am See, Germany, where it was found in early 2020. But when it was discovered, it was nothing more than a rusted chunk of metal with an uncanny resemblance to a chicken tender. Fortunately, 19-year-old student archaeologist Nico Kalman had a feeling that something valuable might be hiding beneath the rust and corrosion. It took nine months of careful grinding and sandblasting to prove him right. But when the experts completed their work, they found themselves looking at a beautiful 2,000-year-old Roman dagger, still in its original decorative sheath. Thousands of Roman soldiers were stationed in the area during the 15-year Roman occupation, and hundreds of their graves have been excavated. But this is the only dagger of this design that's ever been found. It might be that the occupant of the grave was a captain or leader. Unsurprisingly, the find has now been taken under the protection of a local museum and has been on display to the public since early 2022. Countless thousands of people have worshipped within the walls of St. Bavo's Cathedral in Ghent, Belgium over the years. Until February 2020, none of those people had any idea how close they were to one of the most grisly feats of construction we've ever come across. As has been confirmed by archaeologists excavating part of the cathedral prior to the construction of a new visitor center, there's a secret chamber underneath it, with nine walls made of human bones. They're at a loss to explain how they got there or why they were built. The suspicion is that they were supposed to become a sort of Belgian equivalent of the famous catacombs underneath Paris, but were abandoned early in the construction process. It was probably seen as a way to deal with a surplus of human remains as the city's cemeteries grew ever more crowded, necessitating the removal of old bodies to make way for new ones. It's the bones of these older bodies, mostly leg bones if you want to be specific, that make up these ghoulish walls. The bones are almost exclusively from the 15th century, but the walls don't appear to have been built until the 17th. While some may shudder at this practice, it was probably seen as more respectful than throwing the old bones away. In October 2019, archaeologists in England were ecstatic when a massive hoard of Bronze Age riches was discovered on the banks of the famous River Thames in East London. The collection of 453 antique items, buried 3,000 years ago, was discovered during building work and is the United Kingdom's third largest Bronze Age discovery. The entire collection, which includes jewelry, spears, swords, axes, and daggers, seems to have been purposely buried together, possibly as an offering to the gods. Copper ingots were also discovered at the location, supporting the hypothesis of an offering. The site is being modified for gravel mining, 
but archaeologists were allowed to check it before any work began, and it's a good thing they did. However, there is another hypothesis concerning how the objects came to be here. It's conceivable that a blacksmith or a weapon shop formerly stood on this spot, rather than the hoard being an offering. The facility's owners may have buried their valuables to protect them from theft, only to never get the chance to dig them out again. The Havering Hoard, as it's now known, has been on display inside the Museum of London since early 2020. Long before people learned to play and love the game of chess, they played a Viking-inspired game called Nefetafel, or games based on it. While nobody knows the precise rules of this ancient board game, evidence of its popularity exists all over Europe. Here's a particularly striking Nefetafel piece that was found on the English island of Lindisfarne in July 2020. There was once a large medieval monastery on the island, but the monastery was stormed and occupied by Viking raiders in the year 793, during the first stages of the Viking invasion of Britain. They presumably brought their favorite board games along with them. As the piece is made of a heavily decorated piece of blue glass, it's likely that this was the king piece, of which the game had only one. We know the game eventually spread to the rest of Britain because pieces made from either bone or wood have been found at a variety of locations, but glass pieces are extremely rare. In fact, this is only the second example of a glass Nefetafel piece ever to be found there. Generally speaking, stone artifacts last for longer than wooden ones do. Stone can be weathered and worn away, but wood literally rots if it isn't well preserved. There are exceptions to every rule, though, and archaeologists believe that this 7,000-year-old wooden structure in Chechia is the oldest in the world. The experts think that this is a Neolithic-era trenching well, and they've been surprised by the sophistication of the carpentry. The existence of the well went unnoticed until February 2020, when the area was disturbed by construction workers building a new motorway close to Ostrov. The fact that the well is made from oak timbers has allowed scientists to perform dendrochronological tests on it, revealing that the oak trees were felled around the year 5255 BCE. This type of well design was popular during the Bronze and Iron Ages, and was even used in the early days of the Roman Empire. But an example so ancient has never been seen before. It's only survived for this long because it's spent most of the past seven millennia underwater. Now that it's exposed to the elements, it has to be coated in sugar to stop it from disintegrating. Here's another discovery from 2020. A primitive form of sauna in Mexico City that's around 700 years old. It would be more accurate to call this structure, which would have been used by ancient Native Americans, either a steam bath or a sweat lodge. The people of the era referred to them as temazcals and used them for a variety of purposes. Doctors brought the sick here in an attempt to heal them, and there's also some evidence that women came here to give birth. The steam bath is in a historic area of Mexico City known as La Merced, and is thought to have been part of Temazcatitlan, a district of Tenochtitlan, the early Mesoamerican metropolis that would eventually go on to become the Mexico City we know today. Also at the site are the remains of a grand house that was built during the 16th century, and a tannery that operated on the site 100 years after that. The entire area is a tower of cultural and historical layers into which the more you dig, the more you find. In 1583, the Venetian vessel, the Gagiana, sank in the Adriatic Sea in mysterious circumstances while carrying a cargo of goods bound for the Ottoman ruler Murad III. The treasures included embroidered silk, more than 1,000 elaborate wine glasses, chandeliers, and cannons. Most valuable of all, though, were the diamonds. Stories at the time said the captain sank the ship deliberately and ran off with the diamonds, although that was never proven. The wreck was eventually found in 1960, and some of the valuables aboard were recovered, but became the property of the Croatian government because the wreck is in Croatian waters. From the 1960s until now, the valuables have never been shown to the public. Nobody's even 100% sure what the divers were able to retrieve. We're about to find out. 
The current government of Croatia has decided that now is the right time to show their hand and cash in. So a new exhibition based on the Gagiana and its treasures opened to the public in early 2022. The diamonds, however, aren't included in the exhibition. Their whereabouts remain unknown. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!